raise your hand if you're interested. There's a little um, icon under reactions. You can raise your hand. Oh, step up. Okay, if not, um, I'll take care of it. So that's fine. Um, so let's, let's um, Caroline, I, I'm going to be working with Caroline Ibarra, who is going to help us with uh, managing our displays. Caroline, could, could we take a look at the pictures and the maps and just share those for the moment? So for everyone who's, who's um, here, we're going to be talking about what we're calling now reach areas. And reach areas are ways of of describing what is essentially a linear park. Um, so reach area one is Tribeca. So that's, that's the area that we're looking at. Reach area two brings us into the park, into the North Esplanade. Um, reach area three is what we all know as Rockefeller Park. Reach area four is Belvedere Plaza. And you'll be seeing these on a map, so you don't have to memorize all this. Um, reach number five, reach five is the North Cove. Reach six is the South Esplanade. And reach seven, and go down a little further, is the South Cove. So we have seven reaches um, that we're going to be talking about tonight. So let's go back up. Um, and the way this is going to work is we're going to be thinking about the reach areas. And I want you to think about the reach areas in particular, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and how you currently use the different reach areas. What I'd like you to do is use your, um, if you go to the reactions button on your screen, there's a, a, you can put your hand up. And if you would like to share how you use one of these reach areas, my partner here, Caroline, is going to write your answer on a post-it and bringing it, bring it onto the map. So who would like to start us off? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if, oh, Jeff Galloway would like to start us off. So Jeff. I think I accidentally hit the wrong button, but I'll start us off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, there are, there are lots of ways that lots of people use all of these areas. And, and, and there's one way that all areas get kind of used simultaneously. And that is a nice transportation route. Uh, if someone, whether they're a visitor uh, or a resident of Battery Park City wants to get from point A to point B in Battery Park City, and if it's at all convenient, people prefer to go in these reach areas. They prefer to walk along the water. Uh, and, and you'll see this every day out there that uh, you know, all, all seasons of the year. Um, so it's not at all unusual to see people walking from the South Cove to the North Cove and then heading up to Rockefeller Park area. Um, those particular locations in Tribeca are not heavily trafficked by Battery Park City residents, but if you're a Tribeca resident, uh, that is, those are natural routes uh, to take to get into Battery Park City. Um, and, and certainly many uh, Tribeca residents uh, 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 you know, use, the, use Battery Park City for any number of reasons. Um, another, so transportation is one. Um, you know, the, the reach area number three, Rockefeller Park, I think, I mean, I, I've, I've raised uh, two children in Battery Park City from infancy, and now they're 28 and 30 years old. Um, uh, Tammy, I know, has children who are a little bit behind uh, mine, uh, and, but I think anybody who has, has children or has had children in Battery Park City is very familiar with Rockefeller Park. Um, it, it is... Um, a playground uh, for kids. It has the, uh, the top lot, uh, it has the lawns, it has basketball courts, um, some sort of, could never quite figure out what game you're supposed to play there, but I guess kind of a handball court um, uh, area as well and as sculptures that people interact with. Um, so Rockefeller Park is, is a play area for children, but even as you get older, which I can attest to since I'm now older, it's a wonderful place uh, to relax um, and observe others. Um, 
then the Belvedere Plaza is more of a um, passive area, as well as it's a transportation route to and from the ferry. Uh, and so it's often heavily trafficked by commuters or anybody else uh, seeking the ferry. Um, and North Cove Marina, depending upon whether you're a sailor or not, you might actually use it for its intended purpose as a marina, but it's also um, has uh, on the north and the, and the uh, east side uh, restaurant areas and just sit and relax and watch the sunshine areas. On the west side, that area includes the, the dog run, Kowski Plaza playground, the volleyball court, um, which is an area that basically serves almost as a town square uh, for Battery Park City of all sorts of people coming and meeting together visitors and residents alike. And then you've got the Esplanade again, where people walk up and down, and then you've got South Cove, uh, where it's once again more contem contemplative, uh, uh, but a wonderful amenity for residents and visitors alike. So that's my summary. So Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I'm gonna go up to Elizabeth Claps. Elizabeth? Hi there. Yeah, I would just say um, walking and running. You know, a lot of just it's a good place to get exercise, to put on some music and, and walk and run and enjoy um, being so close to the water. And particularly during COVID, certain days just to sit outside and read a book, the various benches in almost every one of those areas, um, or meet a friend for coffee and be able to sit outside six feet apart and um, catch up. So really get some sun, a place to relax, um, or get that exercise in. Right, and, and I think you mentioned socializing. So that's part of that. Um, great, thank you, Elizabeth. I'm gonna go to Tammy Meltzer. Tammy. Hi, and the I'm gonna take off my background so you can also see my daughter who happens to be standing here. This is one of my- <laughs> um, I, Hi. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, all right, so she's here with me because we're going to talk a little bit about a variety of different uses. We have two different perspectives, potentially not even including my younger kids who are doing homework. Um, so I'm going to let Leela go first because she talked. For me, I will say that the area is critical because there aren't enough places for kids once you're old enough to be able to walk the neighborhood on your own. I mean, it's not like they're going to a restaurant at 13, 14, 15 all by themselves and there's activities they could do, right? So this is, from my perspective, the place where they all hang out um, at night, weekends, et cetera. There's a lot of gathering. And I'm gonna pass it to her and then I'll take it back. Go for it. Uh, it's a really good place to walk your dog. It's a nice place to walk if you want to take good sunset photos or if you want to just go for a stroll because you have like a little too much energy. Um, Oh, sometimes it's, I do like chalk art down there. So it's a really nice place to kind of just do some little bit of art, whether you're sitting there and you want to paint something or if you want to do chalk. Um, you know, the volleyball courts are open there sometimes. So it's fun to play if there's anybody on it. If there's nobody on it, you know, it's a good time overall. Uh, it's really nice to see like the boats going back and forth. And I know it's like a lot of tourists like to walk down there because it's like you get to see everything. Um, but it's also really calm and chill, and it's not usually that loud, which is really nice. It's the place that all my kids learned how to ride a bike. Oh. All my, all my kids learned how to ride scooters um, because it's one of the few open areas, um, and depending on the time of day that you can be there, you can usually find um, some slower spots to learn on. And it's I learned to ride a scooter over there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Human-powered ones. without me killing myself, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, yeah, I'm like, don't show your age. Um, it is a, a place where there are active run walks and charity walks that go up and down the Esplanade that are uh, from park to park. That's a, every weekend, I would say, in the spring through June and then in the fall for you know the first couple months, it's extremely active. It's an active recreation space for many of the nurseries and the schools who take kids walking up and down. They do nature walks into the grass and the tree areas. You'll see a lot of the elementary school kids, you know, doing 
uh, bird studies and they work with the organizations locally to study the fish. So connecting to the water is super important. Oyster. The Billion Oyster Project, my daughter sang from behind me. Um, all my kids have learned sailing from a variety of different organizations that operated out of the marina as well. So they've all done those things. The marina is has a beautiful set of historic boats that's super important to keep. Um, and from my perspective, a insurance of non-privatization of the public space and a connection to the water. Because Absolutely. what's that's so beautiful right now about the Esplanade is you, at high tide, you very much feel that you're on the island. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the concerns that I have that, um, we, there was the opening of the battery playscape today. So we were in the battery and they did the most amazing job with their planting, with their culture, ex understanding the needs for climate change and resiliency, but also knowing that that particular space was built to be able to flood and recede. And you will not get the feeling that you are in a walled play area. And that's, um, I think that's really important, especially as we're at the edge of our island. You know, raising anything eight to 10 feet, disconnecting people from the water is very troubling. I understand all of this, but without trying to find ways to make them softer surfaces and make them a staged way so that people still feel that connection to the water and to nature is troubling i will say I mean, is there a um is there a reach one of these reaches that you use more often than others or are you back and forth and back and forth using it um all the time sort of equally there are five of us in our house we all yeah. use them differently and that's a really mm -hmm. important thing I can tell you when we go out to eat in the community, the teens all go up north and they go to Rockefeller and they hang out in Rockefeller or they go up to Pier 25. So they're looking for places to gather, mm -hmm. right? That's one group. There's, you know, weekend rides where we, we ride up and down and the ability to have to be able to ride casually. I'm not talking about, you know, speed riding on the greenway. I'm talking about a casual ride with uh, kids over by the water where you can stop is lovely. Sitting on a bench with the dog. Um, the senior center is up north. Um, that's in the area. It's really important that there's opportunities for them to be able to engage as well. So an accessibility is very okay. important. And I'm hearing Amy um, Van Buskirk has, has says she agrees with everything that you say, Tammy. Um, and she said that people use all of the reaches regularly. Um, Caroline, if you could add, she wanted to put in into reach two, um, critical and heavily used space for children's play, sports, exercise, community events, relaxing, especially for the schools. Yeah. Um, so let's put in recreation, let's put in schools and local parties. Um, also in reach two, that it's a safe outdoor place to meet. So reach so seven also works with the schools because that's down on the southern side. Okay. Um, that's, that's really important. Great. Great. So we're, we're, get, we're at the end of this particular exercise and we're going to move to the next one. But before we do, of all the things that we heard from Jeff and from Tammy and, and, um, and from, I'm sorry, Amy? Was it? Amy. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think are the I, I think the one of the things that I heard that I would think was a key finding from this group is that um, people use this community across the board. They're not using it as 
one reach or another. There, there, there seems to be a, a, um, um, more of a use of it as a linear park from one end to the other. So that was one of the things that I heard. What would you say were, let's say, two other things that we heard? Because we're going to put this into our report back. What would be one other? I think the interesting thing is that each reach that you're identifying has a personality, has a distinct personality. So while you have the people who go from reach one through reach seven, you also have groups of people who stay localized to their reach. So for example, um, my daughter was referencing in reach five and six, specifically doing chalk art, sailing and the volleyball courts. But mm -hmm. if you were somebody who lives at the Hallmark, which is our senior center in the area, you're not necessarily, if you're part of the walking group, you're gonna walk the whole, all the reaches, but if you're looking for quiet reflection, you're going to stay closer to reach, you know, okay. two and three. You know, reach Anybody three. else? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would add to what Tammy was saying there that, that I think implied in everything that she said and everything that I said and things that Amy commented on is that this park area is not like a typical city park. The, this is like People's, people live in this park. And so it is used in uh, almost a backyard kind of manner in a, in a neighborhood park kind of, I mean, this is where the people of Battery Park City kind of live their day-to-day -day lives. And that's one reason they use all the reaches. And, and if you kind of look at the kinds of uses that Tammy was describing that I described, it's kind of things that you just do outside in your yard, outside in your neighborhood street. Um, and uh, I think it's very important to keep that feel for whatever is done to um, uh, as part of the resiliency project. All right, great. Well, thank you. Um, that's terrific. And, and um, Amy also said, use the word backyard. So I think that's a that's a theme. Let's move Caroline down to the to the next. So here we're going to do the same sort of thinking about the reaches, but here we want to talk about. Um, some of the things that you guys just started touching on, which are what, what is the most important things that we need to preserve? Um, where across the site do we really have value and, and we want to, to hold on to that? And also, what, what are, there, are there changes in the current conditions that you might be open to? Are there some things that, that you think could, could shift around a bit? So where do we need to be looking to, um, to really preserve the, the space? Um, and, and where might there be some flexibility around that? Where, let's, let's open up around that. And I, I know you started to touch on it in the last one. That's why I wanted to get here because I, I knew that we were gonna talk about this um, in a minute. So um, again, talking about the reaches, um, let's, let's get a little specific here about some of the things that uh, we really value and some of the things that could, could change. Anybody want to start us off? Amy, would you like to? Or do you prefer to be writing? It's fine if you do. I know that Amy said she was in transit in the earlier uh, chat, so she, she may just be oh, okay. typing in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. Um, what kind of, well, I mean, the question is, what are you asking for, right? What changes to current conditions might you be most open to? What do you, you know, you don't know what to say. You don't know what it is and with every, with every positive, there's a minus. So with every minus, there's a positive. So Nora, I think it's a loaded question. And if you, mm -hmm. if someone said to me, you know, what changes would you be open to? Maybe I'd be open to something, but 20 other people aren't. And I quite frankly think in a listening group of 12 participants, no offense intended, but the sample's a little small. Well, let me elaborate on, because I think Tabby, you, you made a very good point earlier about some things that could be 
uh, nice to have, and that is accessibility to the water. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the whole of Battery Park City is, is really a wonderfully designed and, <clears throat> and very successful neighborhood, but the one flaw that uh, I, I think does exist in the current design is the separation from the water. Uh, and there are a couple of areas in reach two and in reach seven that come a little closer to the water uh, than, um, than everywhere else. Um, but to the extent that the uh, a new design could uh, enhance access to the water and, and perhaps combined with floodability as an option, at least during the storm condition, maybe not daily tidal <laughs> flooding. Um, I think that's something that would be worth exploring. But I think also kind of um, uh, countering the notion of what changes should, would we like to see, basically, what do we have to do? It's a successful park. It's used in a wonderful way. Most people love the way that it is now. They love the functions and, and the, uh, the way that it interacts with the community and the community can interact with that. Uh, they love the backyard aspect of it. Um, uh, they, they, they love the fact that you can go from point A to point B and, and uh, never lose the waterfront view. Um, ideally, you'd wanna preserve as much of that uh, as possible and enhance the kinds of uses that we described in the first section. But it's kind of hard to say, you know, what changes in use would we most be open to uh, and tolerate until we kind of know what are the constraints that have to be uh, accommodated here. Uh, it's a lot easier to say, I prefer A to B or I hate B and C uh, than it is to say in the abstract, you know, how we would like a very successful area to change other than that one issue of waterfront access, which I think would enhance oh, the But area. that is one, but that, but that is, that, that is, is one. one. That is one, which is one reason I raised it as one, but, yeah. uh, and there may be others if, if people speak up with ideas that I would agree with as well as, as being good ideas, but the, right. the one obvious one would be waterfront access, water access. I mean, when you, when you, um, this isn't, this isn't a, a, a vote particularly, Tammy, so that the, the the um, sample size, if you will, um, would be relevant if we were taking a poll. This is really about just collecting input. I mean, we have about 40 people who are divided into these three rooms. Um, that's about the number that we had at each of the three walk shops. So, you know, you collect input as you go along and all of that goes into informing conversations. There's, it, it's not as if somebody said, you know, I, I, that flower doesn't matter to me. And that means we're going to go take that flower away. I mean, that's, that's not what this is about. It's about, it's about talking about the space. So what we just heard from Jeff <clears throat> is that there are a couple of areas in reach two and seven that come close to the water. He'd like to see there being more um, that come close to the water. And he wonders if there are ways to make that happen while accommodating flood protection while you're doing that. And I don't know if there is or there isn't, that's just what I heard him say. Um, sure. So I, I think that's a perfectly viable thing to, to be thinking about. Is it gonna happen? I don't know. And the connection um, to the water that I kind of was referring to is not a connection of a paid commercial marina because we already have one of those. I'm talking about uh, designs that the Battery Park City Authority floated uh, maybe three years ago now that showed potential, you know, um, splashing your feet. Yeah, wave attenuation from <laughs> having step down walkways that got down towards the water, ways that you could, you know, that they would be able to create a floating walkway um, and have, you know, plantings and, you know, maybe, you know, more billion oysters and you know ecological information just things that were the one thing that i think that we used to do a very good job of is creating beautiful natural things in battery park city and not 
many people moved here, me included, because of the natural environment. So the connection to nature is super important. Um, the steps that are being taken for some of the other sides of the resiliency project are far more concrete based. There's more concrete, more containered greenery. And that is not, you know, we have a lot of containers, we have a lot of concrete in this city. What we don't have enough of is connection to the natural environments. And I, I, I agree, that's what I meant by connection. Not, I didn't mean to imply you know, commercial hubs or whatever, it, it, that kind of human connection to the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Double check and see. No, I don't have anything coming in from Amy. Um, anything else that we should be thinking no. about here? I'm sorry. Not, I do not need a concert venue. I do not need a theater. I do not need a rock and cement formation to create an amphitheater. Those are excellent points. We were talking about what we like, but yet I. I Although it's only two of us talking here, I think Tammy speaks for a very large number of people with those comments. Mm -hmm. We have a performing arts center opening up across the street, which I look very much look forward to when it opens, but we don't need a performing arts center in Battery Park City. And Elizabeth agrees with you. She's thumbs upping. Okay, so let's decide here. Um, oh, and Amy is here. She said, nature is our entertainment. What a poet. Um, we don't need any more hardscape. Got it. Okay. Um, so of, so I think nature is our entertainment is a great line. Um, and I'm wondering what else would we want to pull out of here that is, um, key if we could only pull out two or three things. Um, I think Amy to... also just, Amy just also in the chat that we actually, we don't need any more hardscape. We actually need more green space. We need more green space. And Tammy is nodding. Lower and Manhattan, Jeff is pensive. Lower Manhattan overall, beyond Battery Park City in its parkland, has a dearth of open space and green space. You know, our green space is, for the most part, limited to the edges. Um, and we really do have, versus many other neighborhoods, a lot lower um, amount of open space and green space. So any way that we can look to preserve and protect what we have and increase that connection. I mean, that's why people come here. They don't come, they come because of the beauty of the nature. So if I'm, if I might summarize what I'm hearing, which I think is kind of interesting, is that the very same thing that you would preserve, you would change. Um, and that is that you, you want to preserve that human connection to nature, which is why you chose this place in, in large part. Um, but you'd like even more of that. So those are those are those are both the same topic and different sides. Right? Yes, with with the with uh, I would add a caveat that there is a place for hardscape as well. As Tammy mentioned, her children and the same with my children learn to ride bicycles here. Um, you you can't ride bicycles on a lawn. Um, uh, there's a volleyball court um, uh, outside uh, our building that both Tammy and I can see from our apartments uh, that wouldn't work well on grass. Um, and, uh, uh, and just speaking for myself now, um, I could certainly use slightly more green space than is already there. But what I would be really concerned about is loss of existing green space, because so sometimes when the engineers get a, put their design hats on and they're thinking of flood resiliency and so forth, um, I, I get the impression that, well, it's easier to build a cement thing that's gonna flood and, and not destroy greenery than it is to build something that may have greenery on it. Um, and uh, so we, we would very much want to avoid having the existing greenscape, the green space replaced by hardscape, but at least speaking for myself, I'm not suggesting that every piece of hardscape should be replaced with uh, greenery because there's, there's, there's a place for both. 
uh, but the balance right now is probably at the extreme end of hardscape and uh, we, we don't need any more <laughs> and, and we yeah. could probably do it a little less. Okay. Um, All right, great. Terrific. Um, thank I you. Also, I also yeah. think that no one is excited about having a wall built immediately adjacent with their apartment building. Mm -hmm. There are enough walls in Manhattan everywhere. So finding ways to think more creatively is mm -hmm. really important. One of the largest pushbacks that we've had that the community did not get listened to at all in the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project was that they wanted to find a way to not have to demolish everything that was beloved to rebuild you know, you're asking what changes can we live with? I think the question really is for the community, what changes, what can we keep? I agree with that. And, you know, we experienced Sandy, all, all of us, you know, nine years ago now, lots of the buildings made, as well as the authority, made some infrastructure hardening um, projects mm -hmm. that at least in the existing uh, environmental conditions, I think the hope is that they would withstand another uh, Sandy without building a wall. Now we're at 11 feet in uh, elevation pretty much on most of the Esplanade right now. And based on the numbers that were floated around early on, it looks like we have to effectively increase that elevation in some manner. Uh, but I just wanna once again say floodability is something that needs to be looked at, not just in terms of meadows that go down to the waterfront, but also in terms of the hard infrastructure. You know, can it withstand a flood without putting up a wall? Uh, and what can be done to uh, enhance uh, flood uh, resiliency without uh, putting up a wall? And this is slightly off topic, but I think the, the sea, level, sea level rise is the biggest uncertainty in, in, in terms of what to plan. And I've read through all the uh, climate reports and so forth. And I, I think before the final design is done, a hard look needs to be taken at whatever the latest science is on anticipated sea level rise and whether it's going up or going down in the latest adjustments, because that's what has the biggest effect on the flood level, um, uh, design flood level uh, uh, elevation. And a few feet can make a big difference in terms of the practicality of what we're doing and changing the design. Okay, thank you, Jeff. We're, go we're gonna move to the last one. And all of these, everything that you're saying is being recorded and everything will be transferred over to the, um, the team. So just be assured that um, all the comments that are coming in here, including um, Amy, what you're putting in the chat, who uh, she's talking also about the issue of flooding um, and, and, and asking, maybe we should be asking how much flooding we can live with. Um, maybe there are some other conversations to have. And these are, these are interesting points that you're all making and we'll take them in. Um, but I think one of the things that, that Tammy was talking about earlier, which carries over here, is what are the new opportunities? And, and this goes a little bit further to um, some of what you said before. One of the things, Tammy, that you said is finding ways to think more creative, creatively about the solutions. And I think that's an opportunity um, there. I know we heard during the um, workshop that one of the opportunities that we have here is to correct or, or to enhance um, accessibility for folks who have disabilities, physical disabilities. Um, there were several points when we were going through the, the workshops that people pointed out the, the complexity for a person who has a physical disability of finding their way to a ramp. There aren't enough ways to access various places along the reaches. Um, that's what we heard. And I'm, I'm wondering if there are some other things. I think that um, Amy mentioned something about access to transit. Um, is there, let's talk about transit for a minute. Is, is there enough access to transit? Are there, are there um, 
do, are there things that are missing that, that you would like to see? Well, we used to have the downtown connection bus. <laughs> it's coming back in January, they tell me. Yeah. Um, but, but, but actually the existence of that bus is, is kind of a, a commentary on how transit serves Battery Park City uh, in its absence. I mean, it was, it, it was uh, created after 9-11 uh, when lots of roads were blocked and, and it was even more difficult to get around. Um, but uh, it is something of a hike, especially as people get older and certainly with people with disabilities to many of the uh, public transportation, uh, you know, to subways uh, and, and so forth. Um, the downtown connection does a good job um, in enhancing that. City bike also does a good job in enhancing that as well as the ability to take a leisurely ride on your own bicycle or scooter or whatever. Um, uh, uh, with within the neighborhood. Um, but I think we should avoid putting up new barriers to trans transportation um, as part of the redesign. Um, I, I think that accessibility for people with disabilities or otherwise um, is a good point. We, we don't want to make it any worse than it is than it is now. Well, maybe we can make it better. I don't know. Yeah, we may be able to, may be able to. The one comment I want to make about the pier and the thing that, um, here we are talking about climate change and yet we operate diesel ferries and we don't build the infrastructure that is needed to be able to do electric. So we just went through this very large um, presentation and new project and the city is very proud of the expansion of the ferry service, um, including from Staten Island, Battery Park City to Midtown, and yet everything is still diesel. And it's built smack upon the children's playground, the duck pond. And it is the busiest and closest to a residential building anywhere else in the city. There's no other place in the city that has a ferry. That has the proximity. That has mm -hmm. the proximity. So, the quality of life issues are very different. And you know, people who say, well, you know, you're, you're living next to a ferry. Well, what it is today and what it was built was never where we were at. And we really want electric. We want to get rid of the diesel fumes. We want to lower that kind of, it, it, it's sort of inane to me that we're building and talking about solutions for climate change and yet I've got diesel running up and down left and right. But these are the kinds of things that we can bring into this conversation that are, are there are opportunities. When you're looking at a project of the, the scope of this, you have a chance to look at some things that perhaps could enhance the life there. And, and that is one of them that you're, that you're identifying. Well, um, I guess my question is, is that pier moving? We've always been told that there was no movement in that pier, that it is where it is. It can't go further out, it can't come further in, that it's sort of a static point in time. And that's in the reaches that you're talking about. So, you know, how that happens, because whether you consider it part of Belvedere, it's an important topic to bring in and have as part of the dialogue here. Right. So it, and it, yes, absolutely. There's also uh, the conversation of there is art throughout all of Battery Park City. Mm -hmm. And whether it's temporary art or permanent art, there is art throughout the neighborhood. And a large part of that is played out in the parks. Belvedere usually has a rotating Belvedere or North Cove, depending on how it's sited. You know, they always have something going on in those two places for temporary art, transformative art, and then the functions that happen at North Cove Marina in relation to Brookfield, which is all in your colored reach area. Right. Would, would you wanna see more art, more experiential art and, and, and so forth in the, in the park or is, is what's there, what you'd like to make sure you preserve? For me, it'd be about preserving what we have. I don't mm -hmm. need to be a mausoleum or a museum. 
I, I, I agree with what Tammy just said on that with the caveat that some of the resiliency measures themselves may provide uh, opportunities for art mm -hmm. that would not detract from other uses and might in either enhance or mitigate <laughs> the effects of the resiliency uh, matters. And so I, I think, you know, a certainly at a minimum, an aesthetic component needs to be very important for uh, whatever the resiliency measures ultimately are. And if there's opportunities for, uh, for art, one of the nice things about lots of the art in Battery Park City is, is that it's, uh, maybe interactive is the wrong word, but the but people can interact with it. Children can interact with it. Uh, uh, you know, there's, you know, you can, you can, you can sit on it. Some of it's intended to be sat on. Um, and I, and I think that type of art um, is, is, is wonderful. Um, I, I don't think most of us would want Bowery Park City to become a museum. It's, it's too much of a museum already in many respects. We don't want, you know, yeah. It's not to look at, it's to interact with, it's to live with, it's not, it's not to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we covered a lot here. So there are some, there are some opportunities for, um, that should be considered as, as we're moving forward. Um, some things around accessibility, some things around transit access, um, uh, access to public transportation that is a little bit challenging. Um, some concerns about the ferry and the ferry's proximity to the residential area, particularly with um, diesel fumes coming from the ferry. Um, those are some, there are some opportunities there for change potentially. Um, and if we think uh, creati creatively about it, we might be able to do something around that. Um, we certainly want to preserve what we have. Um, we like having art that we, the art is very much a part of the life there where um, we not only look at it, but we interact with it, we sit on it, we touch it. Um, we like that. Um, some of the things that we don't want to have an opportunity for are things like a concert venue or an amphitheater or a performing center. So we, we really don't want to see anything like that. Um, and also don't forget the access to the waterfront that we've talked about in the other uh, items. I mean, that's also an opportunity in the sense of, of uh, enhancing that. That's right. Dimension. That's right. Enhancing the natural environment. I mean, Mm -hmm. There's not enough opportunities. I think of the gardens that we have on the interior side of Battery Park City and the two year waiting list it takes to get a garden plot to live here. You know, the, wow. the excitement for people to be able to be in nature was here before the pandemic, enhanced mm -hmm. through the pandemic, made it even far more important. People didn't want to be sitting on hard surfaces right? <laughs> Sitting in other people's spilled beverages and worrying about touch surfaces. They wanted to be in the natural environment. And right. that's, that's super important down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to, we have about a minute left before we're going to be told to go back into the group. I just want to thank everybody for contributing. Um, I think we've got a nice chock-a-block full map for each of the three. And assuming every, all the other groups did the same, there's a lot of input that's been collected. It'll be interesting to see um, what comes back together when we, when we rejoin. So I think that we're going to, I don't know, any minute now, any second now. I always hate to get caught in the middle of a sentence and you know just disappear, um, but that's what will happen. But I really do thank you for participating. Have you walked the area, Nora? Pardon? Have you spent much time in our parks? I have. I mean, I have since since I was working on north and um, south and then now. Why so, do you ask? Um, I would tell you that it's a very different experience on the weekends versus the weekdays. Yes. If you can, 
try and come and enjoy the neighborhood and experience it as both a tourist and take off your work hat and come on the weekend. It's an okay. interesting change. Yeah, I have friends. I have friends who live in Battery Park, so I come down, um, and and we. I'm in Harlem, so I come down and we and we sit by the waterfront to eat, and I. It's just really, really nice. You know? <laughs>